Okay, now I'm here. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Um, there's been a long process getting this show together and creating the demonstration. I really want to thank a special thank you to Joanne Amatea for being my right hand man and helping me facilitate this Zoom meeting. And she is going to keep track of your chats. And we're going to ask your questions throughout. Um, whenever you have a question, just type it in the chat. And then Joanne's going to keep track of it. And we're going. she's going to ask it. And I will answer it to the best of my ability. Uh, I also want to give a quick thank you to my daughter, who's off screen. And she's um, my gopher today. And <laughs> she's going to help me grab things when I need them and uh, maybe tell me if I need to pause for questions or whatever. So thank you very much for that. So. Have you guys like been really enjoying this beautiful weather we had these past few days? I am so excited for spring and the exciting time that we get to go paint outside and enjoy creating our art outside. Um, and I think this demonstration today will give us an opportunity to um, really try it out in a little bit of a different way. Some of us go normally outside with our watercolor block or just paper, but we could mount a couple paint uh, paper on a board or a panel and bring it outside and paint with us. And I think this is a great opportunity to try this out. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is to show you a completed piece. So I'm gonna, we're gonna- uh, Judy, I, um, I asked you to start your video for your uh, phone, your Did other- you? Is it on? Oh, is it working? Oh, shit. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Yep. 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 So are you sure? Gonna... Is it working? Yeah. I got to add you as now you're. Yep. There you go. Oh, yes. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I hate yeah, it works. That's oh my like, God. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So I'd like to begin by showing you a completed uh, work mounted on a wood panel. So you have a little bit of idea what the heck I'm trying to talk about. Um, so this is one of my paintings that I had mounted um, and sealed and put wax on it and everything. And this is a cradled panel. It's a one and a half inch cradled panel. Um, you can buy other ones that are like two inch deep, whatever you want, but I chose one and a half inches and um, I handled this, the edges um, with wax. I'm going to go into all these things later. I'm just showing you one example, uh, just so you have an idea what I'm talking about as we go through this. So this one is completed. It's been uh, varnished and waxed, and I chose to use wax on the sides, on the cradle. I also want to show you when you begin doing this on a cradled panel, you have to make a couple of decisions right off the bat. Like, how am I going to handle my edges, right? Um, there's lots of options. I chose to leave that painting natural. Um, you can also cha uh, cho choose to treat your edges. Um, here we have um, a black acrylic that's mixed with some uh, matte medium, and it's painted on the edge. So we have a nice black edge, and that's a nice modern finish. I think that's very attractive. Here's another type of finish that you can consider. This one has a slight color to it. This is nickel azo gold mixed with some matte medium in a fairly light manner so that you can still see the grain through it. And I think that's very attractive, okay? And here's another possible choice, which is showing you a couple of choices that you can get your um, creative juices throwing, uh, flowing. Uh, this one is kind of a pickling treatment where it's a little bit of zinc white mixed with the matte medium, and you can still see the grain through it very lightly, okay? So when you begin and you're doing a cradled panel, you have to think about how you want your edges treated. And I recommend treating your edges before so you don't have to go in later and try to paint it and not get it on your top painting, blah, blah. So you get it done first and then you don't have to worry later. So that, that's really nice. I do wanna show you a couple other options. So those are wood cradled panels. Um, some other things you can paint on and we can mount our paper. 
to a board, a hard board. This is thin. This is a painting that you would just pop into a frame, like a plein air frame or an oil painter's frame uh, when, when you're done. Um, so that one, and that's the one that I would bring in my little backpack when I go plein air painting. I would have my plain paper, here's, here, here it is. I'd have my plain paper mounted onto a board that is very lightweight and sturdy and stiff. And um, then I would go out and plein air paint with it. This one here um, happens to be on something called an aluminum composite material. And that's a, a new material for me. I'm not really that familiar with it. I bought it for this demonstration to try. Um, and this is what it looks like when you buy it. It's like this and you peel off the backing um, and then you use it. You don't have to prep this or treat it. You can just mount your paper directly onto this aluminum one. Okay, so that is um, just some options that are out there. I'm, I'm going to blow your mind. Okay, I'm going to tell you another option. Can you show me that other one? You know, you don't have to just use wood cradle panels, just hardboard panels. There are other options out there that you can purchase. Uh, this happens to be an aqua board in a floater frame. So this is something else that, uh, this is not done, sorry. Uh, this is something else that could be treated and sealed and varnished and mounted and framed, not under glass, okay? So this is a product, this happens to be an ampersand product. And then you mount it in here and then it comes with screws that, um, you, you screw it into the wood uh, when you're done. I just wanted to show, whoops, sorry. I just wanted to show you that that exists. So if you really like this idea of mounting, not under glass, there are, are a lot of options out there that you can look at and um, check it out and check into, okay? So my demonstration today is going to uh, pertain to a wood cradle panel. Do I have any questions on just a general overall feeling about this no no question okay no there are no questions no nope. okay you know you guys don't be shy right <laughs> i do better when people ask questions all right so now i'm going to start okay so here's my brand new ampersand naked wood uh wood cradled wood panel I like an ampersand product because they're made out of basswood and they're very high quality. Uh, they come out of the box nice and smooth. Actually, the wood is very smooth and I don't have to treat it ahead of time. I did buy um, another one that's like a no-name brand wood cradle panel. It's a couple dollars cheaper. And that one, the grain on it was a little bit raised. And when, when you buy the cheaper ones like that, you just have to take some sandpaper, some like 220 grit sandpaper, very fine sandpaper, and sand your cradle to get those little uh, fluffy higher parts off. So you sand the top, you definitely sand the sides, all four sides, um, okay? This one happens to be really nice and smooth and I don't really need to do it, but I'm just telling you on those cheaper ones, you will have to sand it. After you sand, get real tiny, uh, tiny, tiny damp, uh, tape paper towel or tissue and look at that I just got look at all that sand just from playing and showing I mean all the sawdust just from sh playing with it and showing you so after you do your sanding definitely wipe it down so there's no sawdust okay and make sure your surface is clean um, I have here I have a self-healing mat so when I make my cuts and trim my thing later um, I don't cut my dining room table. Um, I also have some newsprint or newspaper. 
So, and I have a couple layers of it so that when I do one thing and I get something dirty, I can just take it off and throw it in the corner of the room to reveal a new clean one. So I definitely don't get any of these mediums or anything on the surface of my watercolor paper. Okay, so that's part of the thing of trying to keep your work area clean. So now I'm going to seal the wood. I have a question. Okay. Yes, um, I do have a couple of questions. Okay, where do uh, Peggy asked where do we obtain the panels? Okay, buy them. So, so I happen to buy all the supplies I'm using today. I happen to go to Jerry's Artist Outlet in West Orange, and I bought stuff from there. Uh, you can get these supplies very easily from Cheap Joe's or Dick Blick, or uh, sometimes you can get certain things, well, definitely the mediums in Michael's. I'm not sure if Michael's sells um, and also, you know but reputable mean? art stores definitely have this stuff readily available. Amazon. Oh, Amazon too. Yeah, that's, that's, a good, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's another good option. Right. I have another question before you go. Will there be a P PDF so we can remember all of this? Yes, we're going to. We're recording this, so we're going to edit it a little bit. Um, and then we're going to post that on our website. And then we're also going to have a PDF of like my outline with a couple photos and stuff. So you can refer to that later. Okay. okay. And then somebody at Maria asked if, uh, I don't know that you'll be able to do this, uh, different edging. I know you went over the edging options that you did before, maybe at the end, you know, about how you edged, how the edges were colored. Oh, okay. Well, the edges are colored right up front and yeah. you can um, do that first. If you're going, I'm not going to color the edge of this. I'm going to use this natural or, um, you know, with the wax, okay? But you can just get your, your acrylic, mix it with some matte medium, and you can use a uh, foam brush or whatever. It doesn't really matter too bad if you get it a little bit on the top, because you're going to cover that with your painting. So, you know, just get your edges really good the way you like it, and put one coat on, and let it dry, and then the, the grain might be lifted up a little bit. So you might want to sand it after that first coat is in there and then apply a second coat of your color again and then make it so it's nice and smooth because that's important for your edges to be very presentable. Uh, you don't want to be working on fixing your edges after you have your beautiful painting on here. I, I would say get your edges good now while it's nothing, it's just naked. Does that help? Yeah, that's fine. You're, you're <laughs> okay, so now with a naked wood panel, we have to seal it so that it um, no color from the grain of the wood would seep into our painting uh, down the road. Um, and it also prevents uh, moisture from getting in. It keeps it flat. It won't warp with humidity or anything. So we have to seal our wood panels. Um, so I'm using a gloss medium and varnish to seal it. Okay. Let me in here though. If you're... How so I'm going to that... use my brush. I, I use the brush on the other one. I don't mind seeing brush strokes on this. It doesn't bother me. I should could use, let's see how it looks with the foam roller. That's good too. That shows little marks too. I like a brush personally more than a foam roller. Um, so we're putting a nice even layer on here, a fairly thin layer, not too thick, but I want it even distribution. And this is just sealing the wood. I'm gonna seal the top. I mean, maybe I shouldn't have sealed the top first, but whatever. I'm gonna seal actually, I probably shouldn't have done the top first. Okay. Uh, it is recommended to seal the back so that no moisture um, humidity gets through the back. So I'm sealing the back too. There's Lee Sliwa. I'm definitely not going to be beautiful on this. Okay. 
That, that's right. And I think it's good to do that. It seals it, it helps seal it in. And then I have to do all my edges. I'm going to do my edges. Now, uh, it is possible to leave these edges naked. You don't necessarily have to seal them if you're going to use a wax treatment over them in the end, because a wax is also a sealer. But I'm going to use the gloss and I'm going to seal it up now too. And I'm going to put wax over it later. Any questions yet while I'm doing this mindless activity? Um, nope, not any questions. No. No. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I'm trying. Huh? Okay. I'm too lazy to put it in a bowl. So I just squirt it right on here. Okay. Okay, so now I gotta go let this dry before I can work on mounting my painting. Okay. okay, I'm getting rid of that other paper. So that was a dirty one. I'm exposing a clean one now. Uh, you want to stick this in water? Okay, so now it's been, you know, I don't know, probably an hour or so till that, um, that varnish dries. Now I'm going to start getting ready to mount my painting on here. So I have this panel, this has been all varnished and it's all protected and sealed. It's ready to go and I'm ready to mount on here. The first thing I gotta do is I have a finished painting. I wasn't smart enough to just use a white, clean white panel and paint directly on that. I wanna mount a painting that I um, had done already and I wanna crop it. And so, the question comes, how do I know exactly where I want to crop it to? Like, like this is a 12 by 16 painting and I have an eight by 10 um, thing. Like, how do I know where to put this and where to put the gel and where to lay it? You know, it's really hard. So one trick that I learned is that you take a piece of tracing paper you put your panel down on it. And then you trace the outline, very simple stuff. Trace the outline of the panel. Then you know exactly how big your panel is. Okay, I'm gonna um, outline it, this uh, tracing paper in black so you guys can see it. Uh, this is the best way that I found on how to center you're painting exactly where you want it on a panel. I have seen on YouTube some other artists that just bend their paper over the edges to get a general idea. Um, I like this method much better. It's much more exact. And I really know I'm getting uh, the painting exactly the way I want it mounted on my surface. So now I have this square done. And I'm gonna move these away for a minute. Now I'm gonna figure out, I'm putting the tracing paper over my, Uh oh, what happened to her? I believe she's frozen. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, she's actually showing up fine on the, oh, she's off. Uh, here we go. She's going to start again. Yeah, I'm going to spotlight her again. Judy? 
She's not, doesn't have her mute, her, her, um, she doesn't have her, where's her computer? Okay, we're unmuted. Yes, okay. she can unmute herself. So she what did. was the last step? Can you hear me we, now? Um, it kicked yeah. us out, that's all. Yeah, well, you know what? It didn't like the crop horizontal. It really wanted vertical. So it said, that's it, forget it. I want a vertical crop. So that's why it kicked me out. <laughs> um, so I am going to crop this painting right here. This is what I like. So a cool trick is to take a push pin, okay? Thumbtack push pin. And I'm gonna push through the tracing paper and through, oh, I should have left you, and through my watercolor paper. And it's okay to go through the watercolor paper because my push pin is gonna be a pinchy pinch outside the uh, outside edge of my board. So these little holes uh, will not be on the mount because this pencil line is fatter than the actual mount. So I'm pushing through the four corners. And the reason I have to lift this is because this um, self-healing surface is hard and my push pin doesn't go through it. That's why I had to lift it. So now I know exactly where the four corners are on my painting. Okay. Uh, why don't I just cut the tracing paper? Mm, I don't know. I like this idea because this way I know exactly where it's going. I know exactly where the four corners are. If I just cut the tracing paper, it's not going to help me when I match it on the back. So what I'm doing now is I have, in essence, four dots of my edge. Perfect. So I know this matches exactly the way I wanted to crop my painting. So it correlates perfectly so that when I mount it, I'm going to match it up just right. And it's going to line up just right. Okay. So that's the goal. And I thought this was a, I thought this was a very clever way to do it. So now I'm going to prepare my panel for mounting. Bless you. Okay, now I need these clean pieces under here again. So now I got my panel all ready. I'm going to use soft gel gloss medium to do this. It's a little bit thicker um, than your normal matte medium or whatever. This is a little slightly thicker. You can use heavy gel medium as well. Just something that's slightly more uh, pasty, not too runny. This is gonna be the glue to hold down and make a bond between my watercolor paper and the board. And what I'm using here, um, all the, you know, you can use a big plastic um, palette knife, uh, which is great, but you have to wash it. <laughs> so I am using a piece of cardboard that I had um, cut from the back of a, a pad of paper. And I think this works fine for me. I'm going to apply this on here. And you want a fairly good, you don't want this too thin. I made the mistake um, on another piece where I had too thin of a layer. You don't want it super duper thick, but you don't want it too thin. Like, like this is too thin. You want it thick enough to have enough in there so that when it bonds, it does a good seal and you don't have little edges picking up. So I got to cover this well. De definitely make sure you get your edges covered well, because that's really where it's going to pick up later.
Okay, it's pretty ugly, right? And you also want it to be uh, fairly even. I don't want a big blob over here and then nothing over there. So make sure you have like pretty much an even uh, distribution. Making sure you have those edges good. Oops, this corner. This corner. Definitely keep your eye on those edges, all right? Uh, Judy, uh, someone wanted to know what brand of soft gel gloss are you using? I'm using Golden. <laughs> Can you see it? Golden. It's my third arm. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Oh, all right, got garbage. So now I'm going to pick this up, get a clean sheet, because I got a little bit of medium on there. Get my painting, where did I put my painting? Oh. Okay, that's clean surface, make sure clean surface. Then I'm going to flip this over and put this on within my lines. You guys see that? See that? I'm right in my lines. I put it exactly where I want it to be. Those little dots are fine. They're right on the outside edge of my line. Uh, this does give you time to wiggle it around and smush it around a little bit, right? So I'm going to push a little bit just so it adheres. Okay, and I'm still in my spot. Make sure there's nothing on your fingers. Then I'm gonna flip this over. And I'm gonna take a brayer and you're gonna go from the middle out and you're gonna push it down and work your way out from the middle to the outside edge and you're just um, getting excess gel out of the way. You are also trying to get rid of any air bubbles that may be under there. I think you can also feel it a little with your hands. Make sure your hands are clean, really. Okay. All right, so I think that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do, take that tracing paper, just as a clean surface, and I'm gonna put this upside down. I'm gonna make sure it stayed, it stayed where I wanted it, okay? Then um, I'm going to weigh this down. But before I weigh it down, any goop that uh, squeezed out, I'll take a little tissue and just wipe it. Okay. All right. And then if oh, I got a little bit on the edge, I'll just wipe it off from my edge. Okay. And now I'm going to weigh this down. You have to use a, uh, a board or a sturdy flat object that is larger than your wood panel because you want the weight to be evenly distributed over the whole thing. You don't want it to be weighted down on one corner because then you're not gonna get a good seal on the other corner. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my, I have an art book, my favorite John Salmon book, putting that on top of here. Then I have a flower pot that I'm putting on top of there. And then um, it's gonna be right up to my camera here. I have a frying pan that I'm gonna put on top of that. 
<laughs> All right, anything, anything heavy in your house, you can use um, big cans of tomato sauce. Um, and if you have a bigger piece, you might, you want that board to be bigger than your wood panel. And then you can have something heavy in the middle, but then other heavy things on the corners, just so there's a heavy distribution of weight all around, okay? And then you go and let that sit overnight. You might wanna take another peek because you added all this weight. Uh, some more of this goo might've e um, eased out and you might wanna take a tissue again and wipe, uh, wipe around, okay? And then you let it sit overnight and then get up in the morning and get your surprise. Any questions on that? Uh, no, somebody asked if your cabinets are empty now though. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, thank <laughs> God I don't cook much. <laughs> so, so that's that. So now it's the next morning. My painting's dry. Um, and I got to come back. This one's dry. I have it prepared. I got to come back and check my edges before I trim it. I trim two sides already so I can save time. I don't have to trim it in front of you. So you go and you look on here, make sure it's sealed good, that it's not separating. Okay, you just go like that. Oh, it's glued in there good, yay. I actually, with this piece, I, this is the one I had a little bit of a th too thin and it was uh, not sealed really well right here. And so if that happens and it doesn't have a great seal, you take more of your gel gloss. I use a toothpick. You can use a small brush, but again, I like a toothpick. I can throw it out when I'm done. I don't have to wash it. I just throw it out and you dip it in here. I'm not gonna do it because I don't have a problem. But then you uh, go in the little crack and you poke it in that crack and get it filled in there pretty good. Keep applying it as you need it, okay? And then you press it down again. You press it down, wipe it with a tissue, and then you gotta put a weight over it for probably, I don't know, two hours to make sure that's secure and bonded and done and good now. Then after your two hours are done, you come and pick it out from the weight and you're like, oh good, now I have a good seal and nothing's separating from the edge. So now it's good to go. Now I'm gonna trim. Any questions yet? Uh, no, I didn't know. All right, you guys, are quiet. Please. you guys are quiet. Okay. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna trim this. So you got, I can use um, an X-Acto knife with a fresh blade. You can use um, one of these utility knives with a fret, you can snap it off and get a fresh blade. Has to be a fresh blade so you don't get too many burrs. So um, I'm on my self-healing cutting mat. And you probably have to go through this Ooh, not, not too, ooh, not too bad, did the first time. Uh, sometimes I have to go through a couple swipes. Let's see if I did good on this one. Ooh, not bad, hey, it went pretty good. <laughs> um, so now I have that all trimmed, all four corners are trimmed. What you may like to do Sometimes if your X-Acto knife wasn't perfectly sharp, you get like a little burr from your, your um, paper. Um, or you might just want to, instead of having such a right angle, you might want to take a little bit of sandpaper, just sand it down so it's, it's nice and smooth. Um, Judy, I do yeah. have two questions. Yep. You want to take them? Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, Hema Gupta, she, uh, can you please tell what was used as the initial sealant? So we're going back a little bit. The initial sealant, when you, when you open up, um, where's my, um, gel gloss? Here it is. When you open up the box and you have the naked wood, you got to seal it with gloss medium varnish, like a gloss medium. 
okay? And you just need like one coat on that. And I did the front, the sides and the back. Um, if you're, I'm gonna go and blow your mind, okay? So if you're doing this, seal this too. This is a, um, a natural product. So you have to seal that one too, not just the wood panels. And you seal the front and I, I would seal the back. It doesn't hurt to seal the back. Uh, I have Before. another quick, qu just a quick question. Yeah. Uh, Diana asks on an already painted watercolor, would you still have to sand and seal the wood? Yes, you have to seal the wood because you want it sealed. You want that barrier. You don't want any moisture or anything to get to it. It is definitely recommended to seal the wood before you begin. Uh, okay, that's no, no more questions. Yeah. Is that good? Um, yeah. These aluminum composite panels, you don't have to seal. You can just mount on top of them. So I would do the same thing with this gloss on top of here you know, like I did with uh, just a minute ago. And then, um, you know, I do the same same procedure and it's just on an aluminum panel, but you don't have to prep them ahead of time. I don't need that one yet. Oh yeah, so that's the aluminum panel. And uh, just one last quick one before we go on is, um, I don't know the answer to this either. Can you buy the panels already sealed? I don't, yes, I don't you think can. so. You can buy panels that are already prepared um, I had read an article by Matthew Bird on this, and I believe the company is Raymar that has, I don't know if it's Artistico paper already mounted, but R-A-Y-M-A-R. It already has this stuff done for you and you can just paint on them. Um, speaking of uh, references, Matthew Bird is a big proponent of um, framing this way. Um, he. Um, is pushing this and, um, you know, giving workshops and explanations and everything. And if you go on his website, he has um, a blog that talks about how he um, does the mounting uh, without framing without glass. And at the end of his blog, he also identifies uh, watercolor societies that are allowing um, these type of works in their shows. So that might be an interesting thing to read. Uh, we're gonna mention that uh, when we uh, post our PDF um, of this demo. So you have that as a reference to view. I have a couple more questions, but you wanna continue and then we'll pick up those questions later. Is that okay? Well, you can talk, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I have this all trimmed. This is ready to go. And like I said, I like to sign my name um, after it's trimmed and I see where I wanna put it rather than ahead of time, um, because if when I was cropping before, if I signed it ahead of time, I might want to crop it like right in the middle of my name. So I like to crop it. I mean, I like to sign it after I have it cropped, okay? Uh, uh, I did, a, I'm using a pen because of the, the demo. Shoot, this is Usually I sign my things with watercolor. I'm just doing this for this purpose. Okay. Now I'm ready to varnish this. Now I had to, um, because of this demonstration, I had to go and varnish this the other day so that I can continue with the wax layer. So, um, and it's okay that I have the, var the wax is going to go over my name. It's fine. Um, it's still going to protect it. So I would like, uh, I like to varnish my paintings and then apply the wax. So the varnish, you have to use a spray varnish for a watercolor painting. You cannot on a naked watercolor paper, you cannot use a brush on varnish. It will pick up your paint and make it blur. So for a watercolor painting, you have to spray a varnish on to seal it and fix the colors. And we begin with a UV archival gloss spray varnish. This happens to be Krylon brand. Um, Golden makes another brand. Um, I believe uh, Laco is another brand. There's other ones. Just get one that's UV archival 
and then gloss. This way it won't yellow um, in years and it's gonna remain true to the color and it's an archival museum quality. And we begin with gloss. We're gonna do two coats of gloss. And then after that, we're gonna do two coats of matte finish. Uh, we start with the gloss finish because that preserves the color of the painting. It keeps the colors true to what the painting is. If I started with just the matte and avoided the gloss, there's a possibility that the matte would make some of the darkest areas appear slightly ghosted or milky or not the same as actually when you painted it. So that's why we put the gloss on first to fix it and get it sealed. And then the matte can go on later um, to give it the finish that you like. So we have to do, uh, do you have to use the matte finish? Um, I recommend it. I think, I don't, you know, I recommend using the matte finish, the gloss and the matte. I recommend using them together. Um, so I, you, I'm not going to spray it. Okay, shake it up. Two minutes. Do two minutes. Do this outside in a well-ventilated area. And then you, you spray it six to eight inches from the surface. You don't want it too close because then you're going to get a big um, blob and it's going to drip and run. You don't want it too far away because too far away, it gives the opportunity for some of the droplets to dry in the air before they hit the paper. So you want like six to eight inches and you got to go horizontally. Okay, nice and slow. And I always go from outside the edge across. I don't just go in the perimeter. I go past it all the time. So I have the even distribution. And then you turn it and you go the other way. Okay. And you spray it that way. Then you let that sit for about 15 minutes and it's dry enough to touch. Then you go do it again. This way and that way. Okay. Wait 15 minutes. Gloss is done. Um, and, and you want to do both directions because if you're using cold pressed paper or rough paper, you know they have hills and valleys. And going in both directions gets the spray evenly over the whole paper, not just on the tops. So after those 15 more minutes, go get a coffee, come back. Then we're going to do it with the mat spray. And I do two pass, two, same thing, okay, repetitive. One horizontal, vertical, 15 minutes, horizontal, oops, that's vertical, and then up horizontal. <laughs> 15 minutes, done, okay, done. Then you have to let that sit for about an hour, two hours, I would say, and then that's considered dry and that you can use it. Uh, if you wanna wait till the next day, that's great. So if you've had enough of this and you decide you are done, I'm I can't take this anymore, you can be done. Your painting is sealed. It is protected. It is waterproof. The, what, the paint is not going to run. You can take it right now and pop it. This is a thin one. Uh, I can pop it right in a frame and I'm good to go. Um, but I personally like adding the wax to it. The wax gives it a really nice luster and a nice depth. Okay. Do you have any questions yet? Uh, yes, I do, as a matter okay. of fact. Uh, yep, uh, you already answered sealed. Okay, uh, Meta asks, is it better to paint on a paper larger than the cradle board or pick and cut the paper size beforehand? Well, what I would do if you wanna have the size beforehand, I would just mount it a white piece of paper ahead of time. Then you can paint right on the white paper. So you can, if you want to, you can mount a bunch of white paper and then it's ready to go on the cradle board. <clears throat> you know. uh, that actually leads into Barbara's question, which I, uh, is the process for mounting paper before painting the same? 
yes, the, pay, the process is the same, except I don't have to worry about aligning anything up. I just have to, you know, get my paper over the cradle. So uh, it doesn't matter. There's nothing to crop or anything. And you just, I still would have it extend a little bit beyond. I wouldn't line it up perfectly. I would still have it. So I have to trim a little bit around all four edges. I definitely would do that because these uh, papers have deckled edges and stuff. I would still have it um, extend a little pinchy beyond the edge of the wooden cradle. Okay. And then Peggy asks <clears throat> um, a name for the website. I'm not sure which one, but maybe we'll have everything on the website, the PDF with links and everything after. Right. We will. We're going to put all this up there yeah. because it is a lot of information to retain all at once. Um, so we will put that up. Um, not tomorrow, <laughs> but, <laughs> but soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Here's a, a Barbara asks again. And okay. And the prepare board will accept a wet process without buckling. Yes. Yes. I'm going to answer that one because I've done it. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, good. Yes, that's very good. And, and oh, Matthew Bird is the person, the artist. Uh, Peggy just asked it. Sorry. Yeah, Matthew Bird. He's yeah. um, he's the vice president of the National Watercolor Society. And um, he, he really enjoys mounting his pieces. He does more flat panels. He actually uses a lot of the aluminum um, composite material. And then he puts them in the frame. He frames his still. Um, and it looks great, it looks sharp. Uh, that's it for now, Judy. Okay, so now I'm gonna begin the waxing process. This is varnished, at least four coats. Hey, you know what else I read? When I was reading about this, if you have six coats of varnish, it said that that makes it so the paint color, you know, will stay true always with the UV protectant. So it even means that our fugitive colors will not fade, you know, like opera. Do you guys ever buy opera? I, uh, I used to love opera, but that's a fugitive color. And I got away from it because over years or some period of time, it's supposed to fade and not be as brilliant. Um, so by varnishing these and spray varnishing, it preserves that. So we can um, use those fugitive colors and not have to worry about them fading over time. I thought that was an interesting tidbit of information. I just have a quick question from Doris. Mm -hmm. What if your painting isn't perfectly flat? If your painting's not perfectly flat, I hope it's not too buckly, but by, by, uh, by weighing it down with our heavy items, it should make it adhere because it melds the, the panel to the painting. That uh, gel medium makes them become one. So I believe that will take the buckling out. Um, try these things on old paintings first, right? Try on something to see how you like it. Don't do a brand new master masterpiece and try it there. Try this process out on something that you already have and um, crop it like I did. Crop something, take a good portion Make us buy a small cradle of something of a small portion of an old painting that you really like and then see how it how it goes. So try it out on that first. Oh yeah, this is small. Look at the well, you can buy four by fours, four, four by fours. This is a six by six. So this is a nice little piece to try something out on to see if you like it. And it would fit perfectly in a small but mighty show. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to try to put my wax medium on. Uh, Dorland's wax medium is one product. Gamblin makes another one. I don't know of much difference between the two, except that they're two different companies. Uh, this Dorland's wax also provides an archival protectant for our painting. So this is also archival. It's not going to yellow and it, pre it um, keeps dust and everything away. So I'm using a lint free cloth. I'm using an old t-shirt um, that I cut up into a rag. And this happens to be, I took one out of my husband's drawer rather than my drawer. <laughs> so, um, 
So you scoop out some and then you apply it in a circular motion. Uh, it's hard, probably hard to tell on Zoom, but I already really like, you probably can't tell too much. Can you see, I oh, see the little sheen. Oh, there's a little sheen. Looks, yeah, it looks not, it gives a nice depth. When you see it in person, it really gives a very nice depth to it. So you're putting on uh, not too thick of a, la a layer. We're gonna do at least two coats of wax, okay? Get it covered pretty good. I'm going to look to make sure I have it covered. <laughs> now, when you apply this, it's really like slippery and slick. And, um, you know, so you can tell it's wet. So I just make sure I have a good cover because we're gonna buff this later, okay? So that is covered on there pretty good. And I'm gonna go let this dry. And um, like I said, it feels a little slippery right now. You can... or a piece of leaf sticking to the spray gloss? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, hope for the best, right? I don't um, know the trick. Some people do things in like those um, spray, like booth, um, that would probably be helpful if you had that. You can spray in an Amazon box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You put it inside the box and spray it and then just cover it with, you know, something light. Yeah. So this one I'm going to put aside. Yeah, put that aside. Now I'm going to take my finished paint here. Give me my finished painting. I'm going to take my finished painting that I showed you in the beginning. This one has like uh, a third coat of wax on it. Um, and I had waxed the sides. So I'm going, to, I'm going to show you, you wax the sides too. Okay. Don't just do the top, do all four sides. All right, do that to all four sides and it'll look really nice. Now I'm going to buff it. This is dried overnight. You could let it dry for two days if you wanted to, but I, I let it dry overnight, taking a new, fresh, clean cloth. I'm probably too stingy on my cloth. I probably should have had a bigger one. But um, then you just go in a circular motion and you, you buff it up. And I can see from this angle, you guys may not be able to see, but it brings up a little sheen by doing this buffing. I'm getting a little sheen on my uh, painting. Now you can buff it a lot and bring it up to a much more glossy sheen or just a little bit. It's up to you. That looks cool, right? I don't, can you guys see that at all? The glare on it. There, see, see a little glare on part of it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. See it? That's cool. That's just from doing that. What? Yeah, it gets rid of some of those streaks, what I had on those circles uh, before. Really, really nice. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, it looks really good. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to wipe these two to see what happens. That didn't do as much. The top did more. All right. So 
after you get it buffed to the way you like it. You can add more than two coats of wax if you like. Um, and you can add more coats, buff it more to get the finish that you like. I really like that. Um, so this is considered complete. All I have to do now is uh, for, uh, make it ready to hang. I don't have it with me right now, but uh, what we're suggesting is uh, on these wood panels that are cradled wood panels, um, you get some screw eyes, put them in the side, on the sides, if you can fit your hands in there, right? If it's too small and you can't get your hand in there, um, then mount D-rings um, and put wire across. But if you can get the screw eyes in the side and then put the wire across, that would be the great a great way to go. Okay, then you're ready to hang. Uh, for our shows, for Garden State and the places where we exhibit, we do not allow sawtooth um, hangers. So you have to have a wire. Okay. And then I'm just going to quickly just give you an idea of where's that? Yeah, that one, even though that's still wet. Yeah, just wipe it real quick. The one I just put the wax on, I'm gonna make believe that it's dry and buffed. I just want you to see it. That's good enough. So this is buffed, it's dry, it's beautiful, I love it. So I'm sticking it in here. And then I have, um, I have bought a point driver. This point driver is like $10. There's, there's, um, um, point driver guns that are about a hundred dollars. I wasn't going to spend all that money. So let's we'll see if I can do this. I was going to just see if I can secure one or two of them for you so we can show you. Um, I figure it's going to be hard. For me. However you want to secure the back, you can use little brads and hammer little brads in the back. I thought this point driver thing was pretty slick. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay. But you got to secure the back with brads, point driver, something. And then you can put your D-rings and your wire across, okay? And so then that's, that's the finished painting. Not under glass. And it's cool, there's no glare, no glare from the glass. You know, when you walk into the room, you see the painting, not the glass or the reflection from the window. So it's very nice. Any other questions? No, Diana said that looks great. And actually, Bon, I kind of answered her, but uh, Bonnie asked, um, "What were the two brands of wax again?" <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is Dorland's wax and Gamblin. G A M B L I N. Okay. Um, any other questions? It looks great, Judy. Looks great. Yeah, cool. I think it's I think it's a really fun way. It's a more contemporary way for us watercolor artists to show our work. It gives us more variation and more pop possibilities. Hmm. Judy, it really looks super. The you can really see the the painting directly and not under glass. It's you did a great job. Uh, before we quit, Judy, I have a couple questions that were not picked up. Okay, sure. hold on, hold on yeah, a sec. No problem. Hold on. Um, yeah, so we'll uh, let people ask and answer a couple more questions. Um, and then right at the end, we're gonna go back to Lois. Um, I believe there was one award that uh, we need to um, yes. do. Yes. Yeah, before we nice. quit. But um, I, I think Judy, you did an amazing job. And Jackie, your hands were wonderful <laughs> and very helpful. <laughs> Okay, uh, more questions. 
All right, Judy, uh, two things. Um, one, first of all, that was fantastic. Um, how long, you said after the second or third coat, you could dry overnight, but how, how long do you have to dry in between your wax coats? The wax coats? Um, yeah. I think because it, you definitely can feel it when you put it on, it's slippery. And then I went out for like two hours and I came back and it was not slippery anymore. And okay. so then I applied the next coat of wax. But then after you're done applying your wax, I would let it sit overnight to get good and dry before I try buffing. Okay. So there, there's one thing I am curious about pre-mounted paper. Um, right. Are you still, I can't picture this, but what happens to techniques where you use blooms? Or that I think you still, of... have your, you still have your paper surface. A bloom has to do with the amount of water going in, like uh, wetness going into an almost dry area creates a bloom. We still have our paper and we're still working on the surface of our paper and the water is still soaking into the paper. Yeah, because I'm it thinking of anticipate an issue. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of techniques where people actually um, do multiple washes and actually get the entire paper wet top to bottom. Um, right. And like I'm a wet curious. Wet. Well, yeah, especially wet to wet. And um, just curious how, if, if the, having the bottom surface be glued would make a difference to that. I haven't done that yet, but I don't anticipate an issue with that. You know, it's still soaking the paper. You're getting into the interior portion of the paper. Uh, I Judy, I, I, was just, yeah, I was just going to yeah, say that, yeah. Yeah. that we, um, if we're going to allow this for the Small But Mighty show, and I think that will give us some experience in what works and doesn't work and what, what how we might have to modify it for different kinds of painters. But um, so... I want everybody to try this or people who are interested should try it and then give us some feedback of what worked and what didn't work for them. Uh, and I think that'll be informative for everyone. Right, like, cause me, I do a lot of work on UPO paper and I haven't tried to mount UPO yet. Um, I'm gonna try that next. Um, I don't anticipate a problem because it's still gonna make the bond, um, but it's something I have to try. So we're, we're all learning. Um, this is my knowledge thus far. Are there any more questions, Joanne? Uh, no, Matt, I see low. Um, oh, should you buff each layer of wax? Um, I don't think you have to buff. You can buff in between. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I don't think so. No. I would think each one of these products has very specific directions on them that probably we would refer to for that sort of detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And there's plenty of uh, YouTube videos. I think when Judy and you know, we were researching it, it's a lot of YouTube videos on it, different approaches, I, how they do that as well. Yeah, yeah. everybody we'll probably provide some links way. of the good ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so... My apologies, Doris. <laughs> um, my slide thing slipped and you're wondering